I want to say thank you to the organizer for this uh, workshop. I want to say thank you to Fr François Bon to have invited me, but not to have chosen these uh, topics because uh, <laughs> it's a very difficult topic for me, I think. Uh, in fact, to, to try to make a presentation of uh, settlement in France is very difficult because France is larger than Israel. And uh, so first, um, real synthesis of these uh, topics in France has been done in, uh, in the beginning of the 18th, uh, um, in the uh, 1980s by uh, Jean Chaplou and, and Robert Fossier. But in this period, uh, when, they, they, they read, they, when they wrote the first book on these topics, they had only one site in France to write this book, and most of the book uh, is uh, um, is, re is uh, written uh, not with uh, French data, but with Euro European data, in fact. Since this period, we have a, a very important ch ch changing in France. It's a rescue archaeology, in fact, and uh, what I, I am going to present you uh, is uh, mainly uh, linked to the uh, arch rescue archaeology. Then I will try to to speak about two, two things. First, in the first time, I will try to explain uh, what are uh, the new uh, and recent discovered by uh, as a rescue archaeology. And in the second time, I will try to uh, speak not about data, but about a methodology and about uh, technical to use uh, the large data that arrived after uh, 1955. Because I said we have only one site before 1980, and now it's difficult to know. It's impossible to, 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 to give an exact, a precise number of sites that you can have in Israel. But probably in France, we have more than 1,500 rural sites. When I say rural sites, it's uh, farms or hamlets. And uh, you see in my presentation, you will never see neither one church nor castle, <laughs> only houses, central settlement, and uh, I try a few fields. Then, uh, the, the questions of the archaeology of settlement in France, uh, I think it's necessary to come back and, uh, and to, to try to understand what happened since uh, the 1960s, the period when uh, archaeology, medieval archaeology arrived in France. You have on, the, uh, on this uh, picture the, the first book uh, I speak about from uh, Jean Chaplou and Robert Fossier. But uh, before 1916, archaeology was in France only an archaeology of castles, churches, and abbey. And we have nothing about settlements. Urban set, we have archaeology in, sometimes uh, in towns, but never uh, in uh, countryside. From 1916 to 1955, mainly archaeology was an archaeology of deserted villages. It, in fact, it's very interesting because it's not a topic from an archaeology, it's not really an archaeological, an archaeological topic. It's a topic who come from a question um, which has been uh, given by historian. It, wa it was try to try to answer uh, two questions and uh, topics from a uh, European research program around deserted village. It's not a, a French uh, classical uh, topic, it's an Euro European one, and main of uh, this work has been done, for instance, in England. During this period, we have a very important excavation in France for the historian of archaeology, uh, medieval archaeology. In fact, it's necessary to, to speak of Rougier. Dracy, uh, with uh, people like uh, archaeological, like, like uh, uh, for instance, uh, Gabriel de Bien's Narchemo. And it is during this period that French medieval archaeology uh, was uh, founded, in fact. From 1955 to present, it's possible, it's, I think it's possible to speak of revolution because of the rescue archaeology. Uh, we have from this period, this is beginning in 1955, but most of sites and the uh, organization uh, are involving after 1990. We have a very important increasing of excavated sites, and also we have a considerable expansion of thematics of Thames. Well, 
what is the situation of the French in Europe? I think that France is at the crossroads of two historiographical traditions, sorry for the English. Uh, in Northern and Eastern Europe, we have a first major excavation devoted exclusively to the medieval settlements between the First and the Second World War. It's the case in England, in Germany, in the uh, Netherlands, in Denmark, and in Sweden sometimes. Uh, we have also a continuous excavation and strong development of rescue archaeology since the 19th. It's exactly the same, but in France. But what is interesting, but the difference be be between this area and France, it's, I think, uh, the rescue archaeology is less systematic in this period that we can have in France because of the INRAP system. In France, we have a complete and systematic uh, rescue archaeology because of the law of uh, uh, 2003. It's not exactly the same, in, for instance, in Germany or, or, or each uh, land of his, his own policy. And in England, also, it's not completely uh, the same. Uh, in Southern Europe, we have another system, which is, for the beginning, nearly the same that we can have in France. We have a few excavations before the 1980s or 1990s. Uh, not very few excavations, and we have a situation that is the same that we can we could have in France. And also, the difference that we have not, uh, we have a non-homogeneous non and unsystematic development of rescue archaeology, for instance, in Spain, Italy, or Greece, mostly for the medieval period. Uh, for, for instance, in Italy, we have a lot of <laughs> work which has been done in a um, Roman period, but less in medieval period. The same in Greece. Friends, uh, for France, I think uh, we are exactly in the middle of the, these two situations, and, but the revolution of systematic rescue archaeology since 1950, uh, 1985 allowed to have now a lot of sites, uh, and even for rural settlement sites. Each year, we have in France more than 2,500 uh, uh, archaeological diagnostic trial trenching survey. Most of them are, are done by INRAP. And we have about 500 rescue archaeological excavation uh, in France. It's difficult to know exactly because we have uh, several uh, systems, not only INRAP. <coughs> For to know in this number of sites which are excavated, how, what is a part of the medieval, it's also difficult. We have no data like we can have uh, in Israel, but probably. Um, around 30% of, of sites are medieval sites, and in this 30%, half are urban and half are rural sites. It's interesting to have this, uh, this data. The other thing which is very interesting for France, and I will come back on these uh, topics after, is a very good control of data acquisition conditions with a very homogeneous methodology in the, uh, during the phase of um, uh, trial trenching, because everywhere in France we have nearly the same system of trial trenching, and this system is systematically used. And this is uh, one of the main differences that we can find in other countries in Europe. We have two historiography, but also probably, and it's a difficulty for these topics, we have two history of settlements. In fact, with the border, which is difficult to, to precise, but the border lines will separate Europe, and which is nearly in the middle of France. And this, this line, this virtual line, will be one of my red conductors uh, in fast communication. Two topics then. I, uh, first time I will speak about contribution of recent and mainly rescue archaeology to a uh, knowledge of medieval rural settlement in France, and after I will speak of the difficulty, you see why, of synthesis. What, what meaning giving can we give to the abundance of data and how is it possible to make interpretation of with, with, uh, with data. First thing, I think it's interesting to, to say that uh, it's a, really a, a, sh a paradigm sh shift um, which arrived with the systematic survey because before 1955 the archaeologists of the Middle Ages tended to start from the known written documentation, visible remains, to generate topics and excavation. And it's why we, we had a lot of uh, excavation of churches, uh, 
even villages, because villages was known by written documentation. After 1985, the trenching prospections bring, bring out completely unknown categories of, uh, of sites and allow, very interesting, a minimal quantification of the facts because of the very large number of excavation carried out. Uh, it's, I think, very interesting to, 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 to know that there is not only new site, but there is a lot of site, and it is possible to, to have a new um, method of using these sites. Then, it's perhaps uh, difficult to say, but I think we have a shift from a reasoning, but I don't know, in English, case studies, uh, to uh, using statistic series, in fact. To <coughs> all this excavation, one of the problems of uh, the number of excavation is that um, a large part of these excavation are unpublished and are known only uh, by report, archaeological report, but in, but in France it's difficult to <laughs> To, uh, to, to watch and to read this report because we have not a um, uh, centralized, uh, system, uh, uh, centralized system of conservation of the reports and we have to go in each region to uh, watch, which, to, to read this report. We have also uh, a, a few uh, publications, a few theses. Uh, one of the main of the, this, this PhD is the PhD of uh, Edith Petroman, uh, but we also have a lot of uh, workshop and um, composium and uh, publication, thematic publication, like around the village, or regional uh, publication like l'habitat rural au Moyen Âge in the northwest of France, rural settlement in the northwest of France. So, during this period, we have a multiplication of the excavation on rural sites for the earlier Middle Age, but it's uh, for me impossible to give you a present map of all the sites in France because nobody has this information in France. I put you a map which has been done by Edith Petroman a long time ago, uh, but it's sure that uh, from the when we, we had only one site at the beginning of the 1918s. Now we are more than 1,000 sites and probably more than 1,500 sites. It's difficult to know exactly. What are these sites? What are the main uh, events that we can uh, see with uh, rescue archaeology? I think the, the first one uh, is to show that we, we are not different, uh, that we, that, uh, we've, sorry, but we find exactly the same thing, in fact, in the north of France, not uh, strange, but we can find in Germany and, and even in uh, England or Belgium or Netherlands. The first category of site, which, has, which was completely um, unknown before 1985, was uh, these timber buildings, very numerous, uh, very uh, numerous timber buildings, which, which has been discovered uh, in north of France, mainly in northern France, we have also in the south, but many of them, most of them are in the north of the in northern of France. An old Tiba building, like you have in the in the picture, yeah, it's um, mostly post all buildings. We find only post all, uh, and sometimes we have building isolated, but often we have small hamlet. I come back on that after. This occupation uh, from the early uh, medieval period are often discontinuous occupation. Even when the sites cover many buildings, they are not joined. It's different that we can find in, in present and current villages. Um, also, um, it's open area settlement uh, with a real difficulty to establish links between settlement and social organization. For instance, most of these sites are completely separated from church. We have no church and separated for, from the fortification. Most of the sites are without fortifications. In this building, it's possible to separate three main categories, I think. The first one is a very large building, like the site of Service Les Rubel, which has been excavated by, by François Gentili uh, near Paris. Uh, on this site, we find very, very long building. It's long house in English. 
is building which are known in uh, from England to Germany, uh, North European tradition, long house, classical, very classical, but this kind of, uh, this category of site was not known before 19, uh, 1985 in France. These uh, this buildings are built uh, on both all, sometimes on stone flashing, what we call, I'm not sure of the, the word in English, Solin de Pierre in, France, in French, but I'm not sure in English, uh, stone flashing. We have an, an example here uh, of a very important uh, building like that, which has been discovered of one of the most meridional sites in Chateau Gaillard near Lyon. Uh, it's a rescue archaeology, uh, classical rescue archaeology. You see very, very important buildings here with a lot of post hall and separation inside. We also have smaller buildings, uh, uh, a lot of variety of smaller buildings, uh, smaller houses, uh, which can be found everywhere. Uh, you have here uh, a buildings with post hall, but after we have other occupation uh, and often in the second in the second part of the medieval period we change and we have less and less wood building timber building and more and more stone buildings in fact uh, even if during the earlier uh, earlier media, media age we had also f find uh, stone building stone building and stone house for example, here in the site of La Malène, uh, in the department of Lozère, in the south of France, uh, an, excavation, an excavation which have uh, shown um, houses built in stone, like here, uh, even for the early uh, mid Middle Age. Other structure, very important, uh, which have been discovered for this uh, fatty last year, um, First one probably is uh, what we call second floor buildings, uh, bâtiment à fond, cabane à fond excavé in French, which are uh, very numerous everywhere. Some sites count more than two or three hundred of this small structure. Uh, we had a lot of discussion to en make interpretation of this uh, uh, structure. Um, mainly we think now what we have uh, probably on loom, like this one. Second category uh, of sites which are very often discovered, uh, uh, of, sorry, second category of structure which are very often discovered on this site are the ovens. Uh, we have a lot of ovens in the site of uh, uh, Villiers-le-Sec in the Val d'Oise. Uh, uh, François Gentili uh, made the synthesis on this site show that we have discovered more than 170 uh, ovens on only one site. It's very important. And uh, we have uh, ovens which are excavated, semi-excavated, and sometimes stone built, even during the early Middle Age in the south of France, we can find that. It, is, it was domestic oven, and we have a changing uh, of um, an evolution which changed when we arrive at the end of the medieval, uh, medieval period, we have less oven and probably more carbon oven. I will come back on that in a few minutes. Last um, very important uh, structure that we find uh, during this period is a, what we call silos. Uh, silos were known uh, even at the end of the antiquities, but when we arrive at the second part of the Middle Age, we have more and more silos, and we can find some sites with hundreds, hundreds, sometimes probably thousands of silos. Uh, and this is one of the main discover, discover, new discover of the rescue archaeology because these sites were completely unknown before 1958, uh, 55, no, 1985. Sorry. You can see here. Uh, an example of one of these sites, which is probably on the road, I don't know exactly where it is, it's, in, it's not far from Toulouse, and uh, you have a uh, very uh, important concentration of uh, silo, what we call silo field, uh, with also difficulty to make interpretation of this concentration. We have uh, several explanations. All this uh, organization of, uh, of uh, settlement uh, Sorry, uh, some of these settlements are organized in hamlet. We sometimes have 10, 
20, uh, 10, 12, uh, uh, often is, is between uh, two, three, four, and five, six, seven uh, uh, farms, not more. Sometimes we also have only one farm, completely isolated farm, farm. And the concentration around a church or a castle is exceptional before the 10th century. We have a few examples in north of France and in south of France, but may, most of the concentration and the, the link between churches, castle, arrived at this, during the second part of the Middle Age. After the 10th century, uh, we also have new uh, discover, uh, discovered uh, by the rescue archaeology. I think what one of the most recent is uh, uh, that we know that we have a, a lot of rural sites, in, uh, in fact, during the second part of the Middle Age. But these sites are not, um, we don't find them in the same uh, proportion everywhere in France. So, for instance, if you go in the south, in southwest of France, you find a lot of sites rural settlement of uh, during this period. In the north, you find less sites of this period. Also, we have uh, for this uh, farm, uh, farm stead is some, sometimes isolated farm stead. We have other a uh, new um, structure we, uh, which appeared. Uh, for instance, we have uh, apparition of souterrain, uh, subterranean. I don't know if it's the same, if it is the same word in England, in English. Uh, which is, I think, a typical collective structure uh, which appeared during the second part of the, of the Middle Age. You have here an example of uh, discovering uh, souterrain, which is linked to a, a farm uh, from the 11th century in the south of the department of Lot, not near Toulouse. Uh, on, it was on a motorway. It was under a motorway. Now, this uh, question of the subterranean souterrain is uh, interesting because it was, uh, the, the, these souterrains were known before, in fact, but it's n now it's possible to make, uh, to try to make um, estimation of the concentration of this kind of structure. Before, um, before rescue archaeology, we have map with a lot of souterrain, uh, but in fact, it was only uh, discovering uh, by people who try to find them, but we, we never know how they did to uh, try to make a survey. And in fact, we have not um, uh, uh, quite a strict method to, to make uh, research around the uh, subterranean souterrain. With long uh, line like motorway or TGV, uh, high speed train, we, have, we know now, for instance, in a, in a high-speed train which has been built uh, from Bordeaux to Poitiers in the south, in the west of France, we know that we can find uh, sometimes more than 10 souterrains on uh, only a line, and we have everywhere souterrain. And uh, I give you here a picture of uh, one very small uh, jurisdiction, is nearly four or five communes where I work uh, during a long period and I make excavation. Here and, uh, and this it is in the north of Toulouse, in the south of France, and uh, I have make a survey, a very large survey about subterranean souterrain in this area. It's only five communes, in fact, and I found more than 50 souterrain on only on this area. Then it's a very very common uh, structure. Uh, other difference for the second part of the Middle Age is the reorganization of uh, site. Uh, often we have now more uh, complex sites and uh, we, we, see, we can see on the site um, the apparition of collective man kind of uh, collective management. In fact, for instance, we have no uh, four or five oven. We have only one oven, an oven for several, several farms. But it's the same for souterrain. We all, always find only one souterrain, even if we have four or five uh, farms, buildings. Uh, we have sometimes a field, a common field also uh, for several, uh, then it's another organization that we can find. And we know that even by written documentation uh, for what we call in, in French mass or casals, which are um, archaeological structure, but we are, which are also social structure. Last thing, and I think it's interesting, but uh, last thing that we can uh, say about uh, rescue archaeology, it's that rescue archaeology 
have modified uh, the topics of medieval, medievalistic, uh, of the medieval archaeology in France, and we have a kind of trivialization of the topic of the village. The village was in the center of the, of the thematics before uh, 1985, and now the, vi the village, the question of the village and the concentration of people around churches, around a castle, is still a question, but it's no longer uh, the main question. In fact, we have a very um, important evolution of the thematics which are linked to the discoverer, because in fact, uh, most of the uh, the sites which are discovered in the rescue archaeology are not villages, because motorway, uh, high-speed train go uh, around villages, but not inside. Then, also, we have very, there is other reason. In fact, I have to speak about uh, one topic which has been, which is not uh, topics of rescue archaeology, but which is very important in south of France, which is the question of op what we call opida. Uh, it's the same word for Neolithic for um, pro um, proto-historian uh, sites and Roman sites. Uh, we had a lot of opida medieval opida which were known, but the, the works of Laurent Schneider uh, showed that uh, these opida were um, really small kind of uh, villages, in fact, uh, f uh, with fortification, with the churches, of, uh, then it's kind of village before the village, in fact, which has been discovered. And the main of this site is the site of Pampelune near Montpellier. We have with a, a very hard density of occupation, a uh, lot of houses, uh, stone houses, with political functions and economical function. We have a lot of uh, uh, feature of craftsmen and trades. For instance, in Pampelud, we have a lot of links even with Palestine uh, during the 5th and the 6th century. Other uh, interesting thing about the village is that uh, in, the, in the north, uh, in the north of France, we are in a few cases clear continuity, continuity sorry, between sites of the early Middle Age and villages sites of the late Middle Age. This is a new thing, I think. Uh, for instance, for example, the case of Villiers le Bel near Paris, with a continuity of occupation since the end of the 8th century to the present, and we have uh, sites. And now more and more excavation inside small villages around big town like Paris, because Paris uh, go more bigger and bigger, and we have excavation now in part of Paris, which were countryside and which were completely small villages before. It's the same around other big town in France. We have also, it's interesting for the methodology, a case of a small village, which is uh, near the town of Bordeaux. Uh, in, Donc in the southwest of France, which is called uh, the village of Test du Buche, and which has been taken by the French uh, archaeological administration uh, as a, um, an example to try to uh, know if uh, what, we, what we can um, know if we, if, we, if we make a lot of excavation in a very small village. Then they, they try to, to take this case, and they, uh, since uh, I think uh, for 20 years, they um, put a lot of um, money on these uh, villages, and I think they make more than uh, 20 trial trenching in what is very small villages, in fact. And uh, with this uh, methodology, they, they, they are be able to show that this village was also occupied before the 10th and the 11th century, and we have a continuity of occupation for the early medieval, uh, for the early Middle Age to the present, in fact. Other evolution uh, about the village is a really recent evolution. It's uh, uh, that uh, in a few cases we have discovered uh, in rap, uh, have we discovered, when I say we, it's in rap often, <laughs> have discovered um, deserted, complete deserted village. I have to cite the, the site of um, Le Mas de Roux, uh, which has been discovered near Montpellier, which is uh, half of the villages completely deserted uh, near Montpellier. You have here uh, the site with the um, first occupation around the beginning of the 10th century and that densification after uh, the middle of the 11th century with a 
creation of a fortification, a church, and we have a classical uh, medieval French village which has been destroyed and completely destroyed at the end of the Middle Age. And but this situation is rare, in fact, because when we have a site of deserted village, they are they are often on the on hill on a mountain and not in plain. Bon, je passe là. Uh, last thing, ouais. last last point uh, of the question of the. Uh, of the new thing discovered by rescue archaeology, I think, is a link between the territory, uh, the landscape around uh, the fields and the agrarian landscape around the village and the village and the farm. Because now, most, uh, in most of cases, we try to make a um, presentation of sites not only for the structure but for the whole area which have the agrarian area, what we can have around a site. And when you have a lot of rescue archaeology in a few villages, for instance, in the, around Paris, it's possible to try to make links between uh, several sites and to try to understand the organization, the field organization around uh, settlement sites, which was completely impossible before. Second point of my uh, speak, now, uh, you see, we have a lot of data, but the question is how, what to do with, with this data and how to try to make um, synthesis at the scale of France, in fact, because most of synthesis are regional synthesis, but it's very difficult to make comparison between several regions in France, because, you see, we have, if, if, uh, even if we have the same methodology to, uh, um, for, for instance, for trial trenching survey, we can see that we have not uh, the same results. And uh, I want to show now um, that it's possible with the data to try to uh, make interpretation of the different results that we have. And then even it's interesting to try to find not only on the positive results, but also on the negative <coughs> results, to try to understand why in some area we find no sites nearly no sites, a few of them, but not sites. And in other areas, we find a lot of sites. We have the same methodology. And for instance, uh, we come back on that, but uh, if you make a, a trial trenching uh, in uh, north, in, for instance, in uh, what we call the, uh, in Champagne, in north of Paris, northeast of Paris, you have probably more than 20 times more chance to find something for a medieval period, but in southwest of France. 20 times more chance to find something. It's very interesting, but very difficult to, to, to have an interpretation of that. First time, um, I wanted to show that uh, even if we have 1,500 uh, 1, sites for the question of the world's settlement in France, it's difficult to make an evaluation. It was uh, my question. Uh, to make an evaluation of the reality of the settlement in France during the Middle Age. We don't have general data. And the first data that can be used to try to make an evaluation of the dispersion of population in France was, uh, it's, a it's the first modern map that we have, is a map of what we call map of Massi Ocassini, which has been uh, drawn at the, at the middle of the 18th century. And this map is, uh, has been done with a lot of archives, what we have here, and we have um, what we call état des villes, uh, state of town. In fact, even if, if it is village, which which are document we gave we give for each village or each common community, the name and the position of all the settlement in France. Then we have uh, hundreds of hundreds of pages of uh, document like that. But this documentation is unpublished and is not in a database. Then to try to use it. It's possible to have an, an estimation of what we have there because this documentation has been uh, used after to make other database, uh, and <laughs> current database, and I use to try to uh, know the repartition of the dispersed settlement in France. I use the present uh, and current database of, of uh, EGN, French National Institute of Geography, and it's possible to, uh, what you have here, is the GIS of all the, all each point 
is one point which is uh, in the Cassini map. And in fact, you have here more than uh, 800,000 sites. It's a kind of archaeological sites which are still current in the 18th century. Then it's an archaeological uh, settlement site of the 18th century in France, in fact. You see here, uh, it's interesting to see the concentration. Then when we speak of settlement in France, we often speak of villages, but villages, it's about 40, uh, 40, hundreds, uh, 40 thousand villages in France, towns very small, but most of people in uh, medieval period lived in this kind of settlement. It is farm, hamlet, and not in village. And difference between, uh, but we have perhaps one million sites like that, and only 4,000, uh, uh, 40,000 sites, which are villages. Then, in fact, interesting for the um, methodology and for the historiography to see that most of um, effort, most of money have been uh, put on study, uh, on, on, study, on research on town, villages, but in fact, most of sites are not here. It's interesting, uh, this um, map of uh, France show also when we make a, a, a special analysis that we have uh, several parts in France and we have uh, also two uh, very different parts. Northeast of France uh, uh, characterized by a very hard concentration of sites in the 18th century. In fact, in most of cases we have one village, one commune, one commune, one village, and the village is uh, the village of his own uh, church. And in south, southwest, west of France, it's diff we have different uh, situation, but we can say that it's there that we have a lot of dispersed settlement. And often in southwest, we have uh, a lot of commune uh, without village, sometimes without church. And we can find in uh, only one commune, we can find sometimes more than two, three, four hundred farms, isolated farms. It's completely different uh, landscape. For instance, here, I come back to my uh, jurisdiction of Castelnau, uh, on, on, which is only five communes, uh, present commune, recurrent commune, on this five uh, present commune, I have on the Cassini map 420 uh, inhabited places, farms, a few villages, and probably in the, at the end of the, of the medieval period, more than 500 sites which are inhabited. For instance, we have only in this area uh, nearly 100 mills. A very important and very um, dispersed settlement. Then we have 1,500 sites excavated for more than 800,000 uh, potential sites it's nearly nothing. Then when you make a, a general uh, map of this site, it gives no signification. Uh, we have only the signification of the organization of uh, French archeology, span uh, of the motorway and high speed, but there is no historical signification of the, um, uh, of the position of sites in France. It is probably less than uh, 0.1% of the, of the site. C'est que j'avais eu sur la carte. Bon. <laughs> C'est pas grave. Uh, alors, it's interesting because uh, I, I, I go away. When I, um, we have a very important number of sites, uh, but this is not representative, but we, when we try to, um, to understand what is the regional organization, we find that we have very, very different situation if you are in the south, in southwest, in east, in north, in west. For instance, in southwest of France, which is my area, uh, I know very well this area. Uh, I had made our, it is uh, in 2013, uh, uh, I have made uh, an estimation of rural settlement which have been excavated and for this area, which is a very large um, uh, area, about 20% of the whole France, 
we had only 50 rural sites which, which were known. Uh, I don't speak of village, I speak only of rural settlement around villages. 50 rural sites and only nine sites before the 11th century. Nine sites, and I say I'm sure that on this area, with the same calculation I've done, we are probably more than 100,000 sites and probably more than 500, four or 500 uh, rural sites on this area. Then nine sites, <laughs> it's nearly nothing. And it's, it's strange because, because it's nearly nothing, but in fact, uh, southwest of France, is not Paris, but we have a lot of highway, we have a, a lot of motorway, a lot of um, uh, development, in fact, and we have a rescue, a very important rescue archaeology. Then, in fact, the problem is that uh, when we make comparison between this area and Paris uh, area or <coughs> North area, we find very uh, different um, proportion of sites. For instance, in the region of Champagne-Ardenne, in north of France, which is pr probably 10 times smaller than uh, southwest of France, we have more than 100 sites only for the early medieval uh, Middle Ages. 10 times smaller, 10 times more sites. It's a uh, report from 1 to 100. Completely different. So, what happened? Three hypotheses. Nobody lived in southwest of France, <laughs> but they went to churches, because we have churches, <laughs> and they died, <laughs> because we have a lot of, uh, a lot of cemeteries and uh, necropolis. Second solution, archaeologists of the southwest of France, and I am, Harvard archaeologists. It's possible. Yes, it's possible, because in fact, it's not completely strange to say that, because uh, in north of France, we have uh, a kind of uh, habitude to find this kind of sites. And it's different in Southwest. It's possible that sometimes um, we don't find, we don't find because we don't know how to find. But it can it can be a, an element, but probably there is another solution, which is a methodological problem. In fact, and I will try to explain what happened. I will speak faster because I will not have enough time uh, to understand this anomaly. I've tried to make comparison, fine comparison between two areas southwest of France, this region, and another area which is a northwest of France, because I have very good data on that, because of uh, a collective project uh, which, which was led by Alain Valley, what we call a PCR, Projet Collectif de Recherche, Research, Collective Research Project in France. No, two areas in the north, which is in blue, and the south, which is in red, and we have, it was possible to make comparison. First time, I tried to understand if there was um, uh, a problem with the public politics because in French we have a regional system and each regional uh, system, um, uh, council, uh, archaeological council have, a, have its own policy to um, what we call prescription. Then it's possible that from one region to another we have not exactly the same policy. Uh, for instance, in one area they prefer to make prescription on uh, Proto-historian sites, other no, not exactly the same. I've tried to I've take all the data for during uh, six years from uh, 2005 to 2011, region by region in the whole France, and I, it's possible to show that we have a lot of difference of prescriptions. For instance, uh, in, when I make comparison to the surface surfaces between the two area uh, in the blue one. Northwest, the services, regional services of archaeology, um, make 1.7 times more prescription than in the southwest of France. And we have that sometimes more and more, of, sometimes it's three or four times more, it depends on region. But between these two regions, it's 1.7. Then, theoretically, we should have 1.7 more sites in blue area than in south area even in, in red area, I speak red and blue. <laughs> uh, when we have, we look at, after the day, when we look at the data, we, it's possible to see that we don't have the, this result. In fact, uh, for the whole medieval site, 
I take care only of the rescue archaeology, in fact, because it was interesting of that. Uh, with the rescue archaeology, I have five times more sites in the northwest than in the southwest sites. Uh, for, by kilometers, in fact, I make, because the southwest is very larger, and I take uh, the number of sites per, kilo, per square kilometers. When I take uh, in account the difference of policy of the regional uh, system, uh, the difference uh, get down to three. We have three more chains in the north than in the south. But if I make separation between the early and the second medieval period, I go back to a gap from one to seven to seven. I have seven chance more to find something in the north than in the south. Very, very significant difference, in fact. Then, what happened? <laughs> what happened? To try to understand, I uh, I've also take uh, data from the several um, very uh, long um, projects like highway or uh, motorway or um, high-speed uh, train. And for, we have the chance here to have um, High speed train which has been built uh, exactly between the two areas, between the red and the north. And we have 300 of kilometers which has been completely uh, trenched uh, with, a, with a classical trench survey. More than uh, 3,000 hectares of, of archaeological, archaeological survey and 23 medieval sites have been discovered on this line. But it's not 23 uh, sites which have been discovered everywhere. In fact, the first part, the south of the part, it's nearly 100 kilometers, 80 kilometers, zero site, no site. Second part, between uh, Angoulême and Poitiers, for the, for, uh, we have uh, a few sites, seven sites, but in fact, we have nearly site of the second medieval, of the second part of the Middle Age, late Middle Age. And all the early uh, medieval Middle Age sites are in the north of the part. Uh, we have here uh, between Poitiers and Tours, uh, 16 sites, one site per each six kilometer. Completely different <laughs> that we can find in the south. And it's very interesting because we have exactly the same proportion of sites that we can find in the comparison between the two areas, between the north and the south of the line. I go further, I will not have time to explain that, but I have done exactly the same work on several other um, long, very long uh, projects like Canal uh, Seine Nord Europe, and we have nearly the same thing. For instance, just speak of this one, which is this one uh, project, which has not been done, of a canal, I don't know the name in English, canal, canal, canal. They have, uh, they have surveyed uh, 2,500 hectares, it's nearly the same as the highway, and they have discovered 13 sites from early Middle Age, but zero site from the uh, late Middle Age. It's very interesting to make comparison between the, the two areas, and we can't, I don't have time, but we have exactly this, nearly the same thing in other, uh, in other uh, long projects like that. Then, it's possible to propose, uh, to give a kind of interpretation of this situation, uh, because we have a strong gradation of settlements characteristic from southwest to northeast of France, in, in France. In, in, uh, to, to try to understand, five minutes more, um, I have, um, it's necessary to go uh, not in the report, but in the negative diagnostic report. Uh, because to sh uh, when INRAP makes its, its excavation, its trial trenching, in fact, the methodology which is used, it's interesting to analyze. In fact, you have here uh, a map of uh, hundreds of hundred trial trenching. Uh, and on this map, you can see that all the red uh, uh, line, which you, you have here, circle, uh, the circle show that the current and present uh, farms are systematically, systematically avoided by archaeologists. 
And in fact, it's a problem that I have known for a long time, but it's not changing, I think. And uh, what happened is that on this area, we had made a lot of very important pedestrian survey just uh, above this area. And we are sure that there is a lot of sites, medieval sites. But here, they have, they have discovered nothing. <laughs> have, there is 200 uh, hectares which has been uh, um, surveyed, but they have discovered no site for the medieval period and no site for the modern period, in fact. But there is uh, 12 or 13 f current farms which were still alive, in fact, in the landscape, but they didn't make excavation inside and around, around them. And you have a picture of this, uh, of this farm, and at least there is a, and probably the, 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 the problem is that in part of this site, if you had made excavation, you had find medieval uh, settlement. In fact, because we have a strong continuity and we know that by written documentation, we have a strong continuity of occupation between the middle of the Middle, uh, the middle Age to the present in most of, not most of case. Then if you don't make excavation under current and contemporary site, you don't find medieval site. And it's probably the, one of the main problems and what it is this methodological question which explains the difference, the very important difference that we can find in south and north of France. If I try to now to, to conclude, to conclude, to make a um, presentation as kind of synthesis what happened and what we can say with this situation, it's very synthetic. It probably is uh, it's possible to make a lot of critique of what I am going to say, but uh, in the first period, nearly everywhere in France, during the late antiquity and the very beginning of the Middle Ages, we have a global dispersed settlement, in fact. And it's nearly the same everywhere. We have a first important desertion episode in the south and in the north, nearly everywhere at the end of the, during the fifth and the sixth century. And it's why we find a lot of sites of the late antiquities. If we don't add that, we don't find the site because they are under <laughs> modern sites. After that, we have, it's during this period, that probably we have a beginning of the separation between the two, uh, the two area. Uh, in the north, we have a global dispersed settlement. After the ninth century, we have the beginning of the settlement concentration in villages, but we have a high rate of desertion. In fact, in the north, we have concentration, but the concentration of, in villages is linked to the desertions of dispersed settlement around villages. In the south, we have also beginning of settlement concentration of villages, but we don't have the uh, phenomenon of desertion, what we can find in the, north, in, the, in the north. We still have a very dispersed settlement, and we can find them uh, even in the present uh, landscape. And after, in the north, after, uh, during the second uh, millennium, uh, we can find that uh, main part of population is constrained, is constrained in the village, in the north of France. We have a restructuration of agrarian area with probably strong communitary constraints linked to the village. And we have only one system for the village. In the south, main part of the population still live in dispersed settlement farm, hamlet. And the even if the village exists, we have villages in the, in the south, but often villages can have other functions than agricultural functions. We find, for instance, a lot of craftsmen. Uh, we can find, um, for instance, in the south, um, uh, I don't know, not uh, notaire, I don't know in English. <laughs> Rural, uh, law, on dit des notaires? Solicitors. Rural, uh, rural solicitor, something like that. Um, and the, the other thing is that the structuration of collective constraint and agrarian constraint are not around the village, but are around hamlet, what we call mass in south of France. And this is the separation of uh, two systems of settlement, mm -hmm. but also it is probably a separation of two social systems, in fact. 
And the consequences of this situation is that uh, in the north, all the sites, the settlement sites are deserted from the early Middle Age. Then archaeologists are able to find them. In the south, like you have a continuity, archaeologists don't find a uh, big part of archaeolog uh, archaeological uh, sites of medieval period. Then it's my last, uh, last point. Uh, the last question, which I will not answer today, is to try to understand why there was this fundamental divergence uh, of settlement system around the, probably around the 9th, 10th, 11th century in France, and more generally in Europe, because what I can say here in France, we can uh, abroad the situation and the situation of south of France is nearly the same that we can find in Spain, for instance. Uh, we have a continuity in uh, north of Spain and in south of France. Then you have two landscape, landscape of village, uh, in plain here, uh, village uh, with uh, wild and open area, landscape of open field. And in south, uh, a lot of small hamlet like that. And this situation uh, probably came from uh, the uh, divergence that we had, uh, and we can be explained by the, by the uh, archaeology. Thank you. Thank you.